in previous recordings, I talked about technique compensation for things like patient size changes, differences in, in body habitus, and equipment type as far as uh, addition of filtration. And those technique compensations were almost always mass changes. I'd said that the only time that you want to change your KVP, there's really only two times. And one of those is if you are trying to lower the patient dose, in which case you would use the 15% rule. That would be increasing your KVP by 15% and cutting your mass in half. Or if you needed to affect a change in penetration. So if you had a contrast type study or if you had a um, situation where the patient's additive pathology uh, created such a difference in ZEF number <clears throat> that you needed an increase in KVP in order to penetrate through that. For all other reasons, uh, we adjusted our mass. And so now we're going to talk about generator type. And when, I, when we talk about generator type, what we're talking about is single phase, three phase, and high frequency. Remember, there are two different types of single phase. Uh, single phase uh, half wave rectified or single phase full wave rectified. So a half wave rectified is a system where incoming line voltage is alternating current. So it goes in one direction and goes in the opposite direction. And we've talked pretty extensively about the uh, current as it goes through the x-ray tube. We only want it going in a single direction. So the, the uh, halfway rectified system is a system that doesn't use rectifiers. So the only way that that would work and not have the problems that we talked about before, which would be reverse or inverse voltage uh, causing a, a direct impact on our filament and burning the filament out, would be to have very low exposure uh, systems using full or halfway rectification. <clears throat> we call it half wave rectification because only half of the wave is, is used. So it goes across the x-ray tube and it lacks the voltage to come back across the x-ray tube. So we have current going from cathode to anode, but on that reverse uh, cycle, there's not enough attractive, not enough of a, a difference in potential and, and attractiveness between the anode in the cathode to send the, the electrons from the anode to the cathode. It's only half of the, the wave is used. And the only place that you're going to see those are on very limited exposure systems like dental units. You might see in a doctor's office what we call full wave rectified. Full wave rectified uses that inverse voltage and redirects it so that we have two pulses going in the same direction and only direct current going across the x-ray tube is still pulsating direct current so it goes so it goes from cathode to anode only but we double the by virtue of of using rectifiers and redirecting that negative pulse it, both pulses go from cathode to anode and it effectively doubles the output from single phase half wave rectified to single phase full wave rectified so the reason we call it full wave rectified is because we use the full wave. Those are diagnostic tubes and they're, they cost less than what three phase and high frequency units do. So sometimes in a doctor's office, if it's uh, just a, a small doctor's office with a couple of different doctors and they're on a limited budget, you may see a single phase unit. But that single phase unit is going to be single phase rectified full wave um, rectified units. That's not what this is talking about here. <clears throat> what what this is talking about, uh, the voltage waveform effectively doubling the output and the voltage is more consistent across the, the uh, throughout the exposure and it never drops to zero on three phase is that on three phase units, what we have are three pulses that overlap each other. Each one is rectified so we have direct current and it's still pulsating direct current, but we have 
three different waves that overlap each other. An alternating wave form uh, AC current would look like this. So it goes in one direction and then it uh, stops and it, it, uh, this is basically representative of your voltage. So we go from minimum voltage, effectively zero volts, up to the peak voltage and then back down to zero and then we get a reverse current. So this is like the, the electrons going in one direction. This is like the electrons going in the opposite direction. So we'll go from zero volts all the way back to, um, you know, to the peak voltage and all the way back to zero. So it's as if your electrons are going in one direction and they are, and then back in the opposite direction and back and forth and back and forth. So um, you lose voltage at these points right here, you call it the resting place or zero volts or um, crossover, whatever you want to call it. But you go from minimum voltage to peak voltage to minimum voltage to peak voltage to minimum voltage. So that's a single phase. So on a single phase half wave rectified system, the x-ray tube becomes the rectifier. So the electrons go from cathode to anode, but not anode to cathode. And so this entire portion of the waveform is eliminated. Once we rectify it and we use the whole wave, instead of this going down underneath, it pops back up up here. All right, so we double the output <coughs> and um, those are our diagnostic x-ray tubes. Most of the time though, our diagnostic tubes are going to be three phase and that's what we have here is three phase so what we've got are three voltage waveforms so this would be zero volts so it goes from zero volts um, up to peak voltage back down to zero volts um, up to peak voltage and back to zero volts so this is still al alternating current it's still going back and forth each one of these waveforms is going back and forth but we have three waveforms that are out of sync with each other so that what we have is that our, our minimum voltage never drops all the way down to zero. We don't use those type of machines. What we use are three phase units where we take this negative side and we put it up on the positive side. So that again doubles the output. So we take this pulse and this pulse will be represented up here. It, it will be kind of filling in this gap, this one will be filling in that gap, and this one will be filling in this gap, and all of these will be eliminated down here. So what that means is that three phase rectified, we would have six pulses. All right, so um, instead of having these individual pulses, we'd have double those. So three times two would be six. We'd have six pulses per cycle. The benefit to three phase over the single phase is that we increase output and we increase average because, because the voltage waveform never drops to zero. That gives us a higher average and more output than a single phase unit. On a single phase unit, even if we are rectified, meaning that we've, we've inverted this negative side, it's still, the voltage still drops to zero for every pulse. On three phase, it does not. Uh, even three phase unrectified, it doesn't, but three phase rectified, it would certainly not come close to zero. So on single phase, regardless if, if we've got single phase um, half wave or single phase full wave, we've got 100% voltage ripple. Once we get to three phase six pulse, that drops to about 14%. We have a different way of representing three phase and uh, that's too complicated to, to really get into for this course. But basically if we bounce uh, two three phase six pulse waveforms um, off of each other so that they're out of sync sequence, then what we can do is we can take each one of these and, and we can double those so that we have three phase. 12 pulse. With three phase 12 pulse, our voltage ripple drops to about three to four percent. So we've we've got a very consistent waveform. 
And then uh, high frequency basically takes three phase 12 pulse and it uh, kind of knocks the peak off of them and readjusts our voltage so that uh, we've got a, almost a constant uh, voltage waveform. It's not really a waveform, it's more like a constant potential. So that not only does our voltage never drop to zero, but it doesn't drop more than about 1%. So it's 1% or less voltage ripple and it's almost constant uh, waveform. And a benefit to each one of those as we move from single phase to three phase, three phase, six pulse to three phase, 12 pulse, three phase, 12 pulse to high frequency is we get a higher average energy and an increase in output. And that's what this slide represents. Um, voltage waveform for single phase, three phase and high frequency, we get an increase in output for each one of those from single phase to um, half wave to full wave, we get an increase in output. From full wave to three phase six pulse, we get an increase in output. From six to 12 pulse, we get an increase in output. And then from 12 pulse to high frequency, we get an increase in output. So that kind of like acts like we're increasing our mass. Even though we increase our average en energy as well, it's kind of like increasing our mass. So then you have to think, okay, so if it's kind of like increasing our mass, if we have uh, an exposure that we make on a full wave, uh, single phase full wave rectified unit, then we have the perfect technique and we have to repeat an exam. Let's say we, we shot the perfect uh, exam in our full wave single phase room, but the patient moves. So we have to take them to a, and let's say after, after you make your exposure, your machine broke, it doesn't work anymore. So you have to take them to a three phase room. Well, if the increasing output for three phase over full wave acts as if we increased our mass. Whenever we move the patient from that single phase room to the three phase room, if we use the exact same technique, what do you think is going to happen to your exposure and your index number? It would be as if you overexposed the patient. So what you're going to have to do as you move from a, a single phase to a three phase room is you're going to have to change your technique. You're going to have a tendency to think that since we're looking at three pulses as opposed to one pulse, that the, the output for a three, three phase room is going to be triple. And that's not true. It's going to be about double. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make your exposure based on that. So if you change from a, a full, a, a single phase full wave rectified unit to a three phase room, what you're going to have to do is reduce your mass, again, mass, by a factor of two, because it, is, it was as if you increased your mass by a factor of two just by virtue of changing from a, a single phase to a three phase room. So you're going to compensate, again, with mass. Now, how you're going to remember that is that because you get a higher average, the voltage never drops to zero that pushes on the brim spectrum that pushes the the brim spectrum towards the high energy side which naturally if you um, push the the spectrum towards the high energy side that means you get a more penetrating x-ray beam more penetrating x-ray beam gives you lower contrast and since we're always already going to have lower contrast by virtue of going from a, a full wave to a three-phase room we're going to lose contrast. We don't want to increase KVP. If we increase KVP, then we also reduce contrast with that as well. And therefore, we want to just change mass whenever we're adjusting from a single phase to a three phase room. So from single phase to three phase, if you change from a single phase to a three phase room, you need to cut your mass in half. If you go from a three phase room to a, a single phase room, you need to double your mass. If you go from a a, a single phase to a high frequency, the conversion is about two and a half. So if you go from a, a full wave room, a single phase full wave rectified room to a high frequency room, you would need to reduce your mass by a factor of 2.5. If you go from a high frequency to a, a single phase room, you would need to increase your mass by a factor of 2.5.
So what I was talking about before is represented in this particular slide. Uh, if you increase your average, you increase the likelihood of penetration. So it's just like KVP infiltration. But remember what we talked about before the last test. Uh, KVP infiltration don't completely mirror each other. Whenever you increase your KVP, you increase the average and you increase penetration and the average penetration of the x-ray beam, but you also increase output. When you increase filtration, you increase the average, but you reduce output. In both cases, the grayscale increases, contrast decreases, and latitude increases. With voltage waveform, you increase the output, you don't increase the peak, because remember, KVP is the only thing that affects the peak, but you increase the average without increasing the peak, and filtration be the only thing that affects the minimum energy. The uh, voltage waveform doesn't do anything with that either, but it does increase the output and it increases the average. So all of this still applies. The difference is with KVP and with generator type that if you don't adjust for changes in the um, generator type from single phase to three phase, then what you're going to have is a, a uh, increase in S number or a, a, an a index number that shows that you overexpose the patient as opposed to with increase in filtration. If you don't adjust for the increase in filtration, then what you're going to have is an indication that you decreased um, exposure to the patient to the image receptor. So remember that all of that <coughs> comes with the, the understanding that really your lookup table is what adjusts your contrast and your density. So you're, visually you're not going to see a whole lot of difference, but your S number will change and the doctor um, on his monitor, he may be able to see a difference even if you can't see it on your low resolution workstation monitor. Uh, we talked about this, it's the effect on the spectrum as it increases the height of the bubble because we get an increase in output and it pushes that bubble towards a high energy side, uh, indicating that we have a higher average. So the imaging implications are that realistically it's not going to uh, do anything to contrast. That's going to be your uh, lookup table that, that adjusts your contrast. So. Even if you went from a single phase to a three phase room, um, if you were to compare the images side by side, you probably wouldn't see any difference. But um, in theory, and if you see a, a, a question that asks about changes in, um, in generator type, single phase is gonna be the highest contrast. High frequency is gonna be the lowest contrast. And there will certainly be some differences in your index number if you don't make adjustments to your technique. So again, your technique compensation from single phase to three phase. If you're going from a single phase to a three phase machine, you want to reduce your mass by a factor of two. That is because three phase has twice the output. If you go from a three phase to a single phase, increase your mass by a factor of two. Single phase to high frequency, um, reduce your mass by a factor of 2.5, high frequency single phase, uh, increase your mass by a factor of 2.5. There's really no change between three phase 12 pulse and high frequency. Now the differences in, in voltage ripple, you have 100% voltage ripple in both uh, half wave and full wave rectified. And you have 14% ripple on three phase six pulse and then 4% ripple on three phase 12 pulse and 1% or less on high frequency. Your effects on the brim spectrum, again, single phase, you go to uh, three phase, the peak of the bubble representing the average energy pushed towards a high energy side. So it's high energy side. Plus you got an increase in that height, which gives us an increase in numbers. And then from three phase to high frequency, again, you see the same thing. Peak of the bubble moves towards a high energy side. 
and we'll get a, a little bit of an increase in output. 